Hello, I am Eli Adashi, Professor of Medical Science at Brown University and host of Medscape One on One. Joining me today is Dr. Regina Benjamin, the 18th Surgeon General of the United States, to discuss one of the most pressing public health issues our nation faces, the obesity epidemic. Coined in 2001 by former Surgeon General David Satcher, the obesity epidemic has well earned its name. Since 1980, the prevalence of adult obesity in the U.S. has increased almost threefold to 34 percent. What's more, we hold the dubious distinction of being the world's fattest developed nation. Dr. Benjamin, who was Senate confirmed in October 2009, wasted no time in addressing this issue. Her very first policy paper, The Surgeon General's Vision for a Healthy and Fit Nation, released in January of this year, prominently featured obesity, its causes, and its prevention. Welcome, Dr. Benjamin. It is a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Obesity is frequently variably defined by healthcare practitioners. How would you define it? You know, the most common um, thing that physicians and other clinicians use is the BMI, the relationship between height and weight. And that's been very popular. The so called body the, mass that index. Body mass index. But you can have a a body mass index is outside of the range and still be perfectly healthy. For example, a, a very fit athlete may not fit in that range. However, I find that most people now are starting to move to the percentage of body fat, and that is a much better indicator of, of where you really are. It's a little more difficult in the office, in the clinical setting, to measure that, so we're trying to develop and find ways to measure the percentage of body fat. But as I like to say most of all is that it's not the weight, it's not the dress or the dress size or the or the the weight on the scales. It's how you feel, it's how your energy level, whether your endurance is there, can you walk up a, a flight of stairs, that you're constantly improving where you are as an individual, that you're you're able to play with your kids, you're able to to walk through the parking lot to enjoy yourself and live your life. And so that is real, really the measure that we need to use. Perhaps we can summarize it by saying that uh, we are striving to reach a sense of wellness uh, that is both physical and mental uh, when we successfully combat obesity. Some physicians complain that they don't have enough time in the office to discuss obesity with their patients because they may not be reimbursed specifically for that service. Has the recent Health Reform Act in any way addressed that issue? And for that matter, other efforts that we are all trying to bring to bear on the obesity epidemic? Reimbursement in general has been a, a major concern for physicians in their offices and, and other clinicians. We don't often don't get reimbursed enough to talk about diabetes, to, to talk to someone about um, their blood pressure medicine. But exercise is just as important. Exercise is medicine. It's just as important as that blood pressure pill. Oftentimes that'll determine how many blood pressure pills you take. So we have to look at it in the same, same light. We don't have the best reimbursement for any of those. So. As physicians, you know, our ethical obligations, our obligation as a, as a doctor comes first. Now, the, the reimbursement issues are very real, and so we were very pleased when we passed the health reform bill, uh, now the health reform law. Um, in it is a basic idea of wellness and prevention, and the entire law is based on wellness and prevention. And so we should start to see a lot more reimbursements to things that can move and, and move toward the prevention. Even in that law, we have a, a, an entire council within the government focused on prevention. 
and prevention and making us a healthier our nation. Never before in, the, in our history have we really had a chance to talk about how prevention is important in our health care system. And so I'm very optimistic and very positive about how this change in law is going to help us change our, our system from a sick system to a wellness system. So there is good reason to believe, in fact, it almost is a certainty that with the new health care law, our ability to address obesity and related issues uh, is enhanced and will be further enhanced by a variety of features that were built into the bill uh, with an eye towards promoting prevention. That's exactly correct. And as, as the um, the regulations and the and the policies are written, they will be written with those in mind. So, good. Some family physicians who obviously see the entire family, uh, women, children, um, have raised a concern about the lack of specific guidelines uh, that would facilitate their role in dealing with particularly childhood obesity. Uh, what are your thoughts about this issue and what perhaps could we or should we as a medical community do about that? Well, you know, we often had the growth charts to measure the height and weight of, of children as mm -hmm. they grow in, in certain percentages of that. And, and that's helpful for us to know where to start talking about whether your child is, is inside or outside of that, that range. But we really do need to develop some better absolute guidelines as to, to how to, to approach this. And I think that's a, an area for us to, to improve and to help our primary care physicians to, to have some tools in their hands when they walk in that office. And I think that's a great place to, for us to start to develop. So something to look forward to and to work on as we proceed. Are there any other specific messages uh, that you would like to deliver to healthcare providers that we haven't covered perhaps uh, today? Basically that we as health care clinicians and, and, and physicians and nurse practitioners as physicians assistants, all the, the health care um, providers are trusted by our patients. They trust us that we um, are giving them good information that we're we're providing that for them and because they trust us so much we have a an, an obligation to help them particularly in, in these particular type illnesses and and diseases and, and disease processes obesity and overweight as, as we've said is a major major issue it's one of the things that takes behavioral changes and for us as as health providers we can be that change because people do trust us. And when we tell them something, they, they, they respect it and they trust us. The other thing is that we, um, as clinicians, have that opportunity to set an example. And we can do it ourselves. And we can start setting examples for our patients and, and make them understand how important it is because we do it ourselves. So. Well said. On this note, a sincere thank you to our guest, Dr. Regina Benjamin, and to our viewers for joining Medscape One on One. Until next time, I am Ellie Adashi. <laughs>